I'm honored and privileged to speak a few words about a man who I admired and wish I had the opportunity to work with him for more, more years to come in the future. When we worked on the last Sajid Premadasa presidential election campaign which uh, Nalin Bandara just spoke about, we proposed to strengthen the reforms we had uh, initiated um, to take the nation as a whole, it had fallen into due to ill planning both on the economy and in society. Mangala, even though he faded out towards the end of that campaign and decided later not to contest the general election, he reignited his ideology with what Mr. Ranil Vikramasinghe earlier spoke about with young people called the Radical Center and the Freedom Hub. Mangala was always a trailblazer and most people who spoke about Mangala today mentioned that fact. He feared no one. The man who had the courage of steel or you may substitute with something else that we use in normal parlance of steel to stand for what he believed in. The reforms he started on the economy uh, were truly significant. He understood the meaning of fiscal discipline. I recall Honorable Chair the debates at the government group meeting uh, on certain issues dealing with finance and some people would argue with him you don't know what you're doing you have to give jobs you have to distribute this or that and he would listen and reply I know what I'm doing and he would continue to go ahead and do what he planned to do since the 50s it was only during Mangala Samaravira's stint as the Minister of Finance Sri Lanka saw a primary surplus in 2018 and 2019 helped by our colleague Geran Vikramaratna. It was a huge deal. You know he was not an economist, we all knew that. But he was a hell of a smart man. He was able to figure things out very quickly. Having held ministerial portfolios since he was a young man, he knew how to get things done. He was able to figure things out. I recall vividly a series of events during the 2018 October coup. Iran and I joined Mangala on the early morning breakfast media conferences we held at his Stan Crescent house. He was aghast at how the illegal government was messing things up. After the legitimate government was reinstated and Mangala was again the Minister of Finance, the economic situation looked bad. I recall very well Mangala telling me, Harsha, there is a $500 million bond that needs to be paid in a week. Uh, they had kicked the IMF agreement aside. Government securities to the amount of I think around $500 million had flown out. Credit ratings had been downgraded. Mangala said, we need to get back on track. We need to speak to the IMF and we need to get back on the, the, the program. We need to think about the future. He wanted the credit ratings to come back up. Then he said, uh, let us go and meet Christian Lagarde. And uh, he invited uh, Mr. Kumaraswamy and myself. I recall it was a very cold winter uh, morning when we uh, had the meeting or supposed to have the meeting. I, I remember the meeting vividly the next day. Uh, he met uh, Miss Lagarde and um, they had so much respect for him and agreed to all his requests. And I realized what a great politician he was at that meeting. How he was able to speak to leaders of the world and get his point across and get them to agree. Not only Lagarde, but 
as his junior at the Ministry of Foreign Affairs, Mr. Chairman, I had an amazing opportunity to be a part of the many discussions he had with global leaders. You know, I get goosebumps when I think about those meetings. He had a few favorites though. And I think his most favorite among all these dignitaries he knew was uh, President Obama's cabinet member, Samantha Powell. Working with him uh, was such a pleasure. I have said it before, Mr. Chairman, but I will say it again. Mangala was my best boss. Given how senior politicians try to take credit for things their juniors do, I want to give you one example. It was April 2017. We had worked really hard to get GSP Plus back. Everything was on track. And a resolution was brought by two MEPs uh, to deny Sri Lanka the GSP Plus uh, concession. He told me, get on a, you know, go and meet these people. You know, deal with it. I will, I will sort everything out from here. You speak to them. And uh, all his connections he put to use. Uh, I recall uh, Nerds Deva. He was an MEP from the UK. Uh, and of course, Rodney Pereira, who was our man in Brussels. And uh, all the diplomatic community there came to Mangala's rescue. I was just a point man, you know, to, to manage the situation. And we, we beat the resolution 436 to 119. I was ecstatic and I called Mangala, I recall, from the, the, the canteen uh, in the uh, European Parliament. I said, Mangala, Mangala, we got it. Uh, why don't you announce it? He said, uh, Hasha, it can wait till you come. You come and have a, a press conference and announce it. Which politician in this dog-eat-dog -dog world would do that, Mr. Chairman? That was Mangala Samaravira. In fact, he became, I became his friend. I will take only a couple of minutes and stop, right? More than a work colleague. And, uh, and he had time uh, at his house, couch, maybe a couple of others, dog, and a few scotches, uh, a, a lengthy discussion on politics. I only wish I could have worked with him a lot more after the next change. Even though, even though some of his ideas didn't quite gel with our new political party, I'm 100% certain that we would have somehow found the way to work together. After all, he dedicated his life to pursue his vision for a multi-ethnic, multi-religious, multilingual Sri Lanka that he always said, would guarantee equal rights, justice and dignity for all. Dear Mangala, wherever you may be, let me give you my word. That is my vision too, sir. In closing, I wish to convey my deepest condolences to his sister Jayanti, who was, like Ralph said, was always with her, continued to be by his side, and all others who were part of his family, the one he, the liberal man, created for himself. May I Mangala attain the supreme bliss of Nirvana. Thank you.